This next video is the fourth video in the series connected to September 18th, where we are focused on the I in geographic information systems. Uh, last video, we introduced the concept of calculating fields. And we did some basic taking information from other fields and then quickly entering to 2.4 and then 2.24 over here into text. When I ended the last video, I wanted to sort of show you what that key difference was here. They look so similar, but there's one key differentiation, right? This is to the right and this is to the left. And what I mean by that is that this is an actual number, meaning it can be processed. I can multiply it, I can subtract it, I can add it, so on and so forth, and it will perform operations. This cannot add or subtract because even though it looks like a number, it's not, right? It's masquerading as a number. And when I enter new types of characters in a second, it'll become a little clearer what I mean by that. But let me show you a really quick example. Right, if I were to come in here to double, and I were to select calculate field, and let's say I say, hey, double, why don't you take whatever integer's value is, which is two, and I want you to multiply it by 7.08. I'm just making up nonsense. That is not 7.08. Multiplied by 7.08. Or 7. Run it. No problems. But if I try to do the same thing here with text and say, hey, I see that that's number 2.24. Why don't you take that? I want you to multiply it by 7.04. Let's get you done. No problems. Nope. Big problems, right? It's going to tell me, I'm sorry, but I have failed. I can't do that for you. Right? Why did it actually fail? If you read through sort of the error, it's going to tell you that the expression is not going to work because... You can't do a non-integer of the type float, right? It is encountering over here an actual text. It's not encountering a number. It's encountering something in quotes. And this is best exemplified if I actually try to enter a true text value into text, right? What if I come over here and I enter the word cheese and I put it in quotations? Double quote, double quote, cheese, run, And that's really what you tend to use string fields for, or text fields. They actually store text, right? Information that looks like you're typing it from your sort of keyboard in a sentence, not true numbers that are meant for addition of subtraction. So let's tease out a couple of more detailed, you know, uh, advanced elements that you can do with Field Calculator. And to do that, I want to prepare three fields. So I want you to come on up here to Fields, Data, Fields, And we're going to add three. We're going to add, click on one and just say all acres. We'll make that a double. And we'll give that like a 15 and a 5. Hit enter. We're going to add another that's PCT park, right, meaning percent parkland. We'll make that a double since it's going to be a percent. Maybe I'll do six and three, right? Six total digits, three to the right. Oh, I'm not sure why I do that. And then the last one I want to do is let's do one that says um, uh, pop to job, right? And in alias, to remind myself of what that one is, since it looks a little silly, I'll say population to jobs ratio. We'll make that a double, make that another sort of 10 and 5. All acres, right, they're all double, percent park and population to job. Save it. Cool. So now in those fields, I'm going to want to do three different things. I'm going to actually want to get the total acreage of the neighborhoods here. 
then naturally I'm going to want to combine it with this park acres field, right? I found a field where I had uh, added to this data through a, a technique we'll learn in a couple weeks where I appended the, the actual number of acreage of park. And so maybe I'd like to visualize and understand each neighborhood by what percentage of their total area is accounted for by parks. Well, I can do that with field calculator because I'm using the different values that are in my fields to create something new. Same thing with population to jobs ratio. Maybe what I want to see here is taking the total number of population, total number of people that live here, divided by the jobs, and get a sense, right? How many people in my neighborhood are here to live? How many people are sort of working here each day, right? Is it roughly balanced? Uh, you know, how much more dominant is population? And are there even any where sort of the number of people that are working there in any given day uh, outweighs the number that are living there? So let's come on over here to all acres, and we're going to do something we haven't done yet, which is right-click and go to Calculate Geometry. And I want you to come to Calculate Geometry, all acres, and it's going to ask you the property, right? What geometric property do you want to calculate here? And we're going to say, holy my goodness, there's a ton to do. We don't really need to worry about any of this. The only ones we'll ever really calculate are maybe occasionally the XY coordinates although we more often do that when we have sort of point-based data that doesn't have coordinates and, and we want to make it easier to track. Perimeter, which is uh, obviously the uh, length around the edge. But more importantly, what we'll look at here is area. Right? Neighborhoods, all area, acres, I want to calculate area. And the next thing it's going to ask you is what unit, right? What unit are you going to calculate your area in? And you can sort of choose what works best for you. You know, if you're a type of person that thinks in square kilometers, pick it. You think in hectares, pick it. But since the other one, you know, parks is in acres, I'm going to want to have them be normalized, and I'll make it acres. Always good to specify the coordinate system you want to calculate here. You may remember last video when we showed this example for Philly and Seattle and showed that if I tried to calculate Seattle in Philly's coordinate system, the numbers were off, right, because Seattle was distorted to try to be in Philly's universe. So it's always good to sort of calculate with whatever the data is in, right? So I'll just say, you know, hey, use the coordinate system that you have here for, for yourself. And I'll run it, and in a minute what we'll see is all acres will pop up. Cool? And there we go. Now we have acreage. And this is one of the most potent, powerful, frequently return to tools in GIS is quickly measuring the individual geometry, particularly the area for any number of shapes that you draw or that are out there. So let's use it now, right? If I know the acreage and I know the acreage of parks, let's get a sense of the percentage that are parks. And so I'm going to go here and calculate a field, percent parks, and I'll make it like this, right? 100 times, and the value will be park acres, right? And again, the exclamation means the unique value that is stored in each cell. So for this neighborhood, that would be 0, 0, 0, then 68. Divide that by the unique value that lives in acres. Right? Multiplying by 100 because that'll take the percentage that normally would be somewhere between 0 and 1 and just put it more on a like two digit and then one digit scale. Totally up to you, whatever you want to visualize. And run it, right? These ones are going to show up as zero, as you'd expect, because there is no parkland there, but you'll start to see at the row right here, 7.89%, right? 7.19%. And then I can start to sort them and see the difference, right? You have this neighborhood over here, which happens to be Wissahickon Park, its own neighborhood, right, that is predominantly aligned by the park. Same thing with East, West, Penny Pack, right? There's some houses sort of on the end. And then you have a neighborhood that you probably haven't visited yet. It's all the way up here in the northwestern part of Philadelphia called Endor. It butts right up against Wissahickon Park. And that's roughly or so 40% of that is sort of comprised by parks. And you'll find others, you know, with the Fairmount Park system here. And again, this is just the Fairmount Park system, not all parks. You'll keep coming down here and you'll see some that ultimately are, you know, one, two, or even zero percent because there doesn't happen to be any Fairmount Parkland. And let's do that same thing with population to job ratio, right? I'll come to population to job ratio 
and I'll set something up like that. Hey, tell me the number of people, oops, population, and divide that by jobs, right? Or even I'll, yeah, hopefully, I think this is going to cause an error because there might be one area that doesn't have a job, and if so, we'll fix it, but population divided by jobs, right? And so that'll give us a ratio that'll maybe tell us there's this many people living here to this many jobs. So again, I think it's going to run an error because a couple fields, I think, have zero people working in them. Um, you know, and you can't divide by zero. Okay, no, good. We're all good. So then I'll look at my thing, and there we go, right? Any number of things I can sort of sort, and I can see certain areas, you know, maybe like these ones down here, which have low ratios like Franklin Mills, right, and Northeast Airport, which are really accommodated by people sort of living there or working there, the Navy Yard, but not living as much, versus sort of other ones that I might come all the way down and find a neighborhood like uh, Penrose, which is almost entirely, right, residential. I mean, you could think there are 47 times more people that are living there than are sort of working there, so there's not a, a difficult balance. So again, I'm just taking data and I'm, I'm, I'm formulating it in, in sort of in different ways and I'm using the attributes that I have to be able to do that. The last thing that I want to show you, and I'm going to tease it very briefly because I want to demonstrate the power of these helpers right here, is I'm going to come back to that text field that now says cheese. And I want to do something here where I would say, um, whatever's in district name. So take district name, and there's something in here called replace, right? And I'm going to come down and I'm going to find replace. And I'll say dot replace, and maybe anywhere where there's the word north, because I have a couple right there. Replace north comma, replace it with the word cheese. What I have done is not practical. It is not necessary. I hope you would never do this for a project. But I want to show you the power of these tools that we will eventually cover in Field Calculator that we can go so much deeper than what I've shown. We can begin to carve words apart and replace. We can split them. Right? We can find characters in each. We can enter equations into here that says, if there's a certain value here, provide another value. We can convert forms. Right? I'll even come and end the video on that one because I think it's such a cool concept. I can come here to double. That same thing that failed in double earlier where I tried to add or multiply the value in text. Right? I remember originally text was like 2.24. Maybe let's even just do that again real quick. I'll come to text and I'll say make yourself 2.24 again just so I can end the video on this point. And so if I come back and end the video here on double and I'll say double, take the value from text Take the value from text, multiply yourself by 7.5, but this time I'm going to go to the beginning and write the word float in lowercase, F-L-O-A-T, parenthesis, parenthesis, and what I'm going to show you here is how you can change forms. I literally say take what looks like a number in text, because it's just numeric characters, and convert it so it's actually a float. So it's actually something that can be added and subtracted and multiply that by 7.5. And what had initially failed would then suddenly work, right? Because I am changing the form inherent to be able to run that calculation. So end the video on that note. There is immense depth with Field Calculator that I will litter throughout the semester in videos as we get more advanced. And for those students interested now, I'll provide some links um, when, we, when we review class or these videos to something on our YouTube channel that really dives more deeply into some of the advanced topics right now.